Beck. Looking forward to see how Ringo goes. Yeah, Ringo Orbeck. They've got uh, Tiara Richmond and, uh, and Mark Richmond, the brothers. And Ed Jenkins leads out the Australian side. Highly fancied for this Oceania IRB Sevens tournament here at North Sydney Oval. And uh, very exciting to see the Aussies running around in their lime green outfits. Yeah, it's an uh, interesting colour, the lime green. It's become synonymous with the Sevens team over the last season or two. Very identifiable, though. Yeah, they definitely stand out on the sidelines. We've got Michael O'Connor, the coach. Pressure's on these boys. They have to uh, win or at least make the final to play at the Rugby World Cup Sevens Tournament next year in Moscow. So there's a fair bit of pressure on. They've brought in the big guns. Luke Morahan is on the bench for the Aussie side as the referee gets us underway. A deep kickoff from the Australian Sevens side. And Tahiti looking to play a territory game. It's cleaned up there at the back, though. That's Jacob Taylor going for a little bit of a dance. He finds some space on the outside. A loose pass, though. To, that's uh, Palmer Fowl. He goes to ground. Can't quite keep his footing. Offside. Offside from the, the referee. Signals it from the Tahitians. So good strength in the tackle there. It's a good run by Foley early on. Now there's a two-on-one. Palmer Fowl, and he'll just walk it over the line. So it's 5-0 to the Australian 7 side. Palmer Fowl scoring the first try. You're yeah, doing it pretty easy, Australia. They'll be keen to get the job done here against Tahiti, but also to conserve some energy as we approach probably the, the hotter part of the day. And if they know what they've got to do. Yep. I think they'll, uh, you know, they'll, they'll work on their, their tight plays that they, they practice. It's a good opportunity. Um, Tahiti will put up a fight. Um, but as you saw, Australia, if they just stick to their guns, they, look, they should get the job done. Yeah, Tahiti just, their defence a little bit in disarray there as the conversion is taken. It's not a bad one either. He slots it from the sideline. Great conversion there from Taylor. So it's 7-0. And the Aussie 7 side looking pretty good, Nick, early on this day two of the Oceania 7s. It's a nice start by Australia. They've got a pretty strong bench as well to give everyone a run. It really is you know, ab about leading up to the, the pointy end of the tournament. Let's go, Chris. As Taylor gets us back underway, a fairly deep restart well into the 22 of Tahiti. Yeah, they're looking to put the pressure on from the restart. And that's solid defence already. You can see that. If, oh, a big hit there in midfield. And it's a turnover. Out to Palmer Fowl, and that's another try to the Aussie seven side. Con Foley. Yeah, all a bit too easy there for Australia. Uh, good defence, the turnover. They're doing it at half speed as well. Try scores are just jogging it in at the moment. Yeah, Tahiti can't get out of their own 22, it seems. Yeah, one of the joys of seven rugby, though, is that no one tries to kick it too much out of their 22. Everyone, it, it, it really is the running rugby. It's something that... I think the 15 aside teams could probably take a leaf out of from what we've seen in recent times. Jacob Taylor lining up his second conversion. Hits it beautifully again. Just uses the breeze to bring it back, and it's 14-0. That's two great conversions from Jacob Taylor. That's even better than the first. Well, we spoke with Tony Lewis about that earlier, the importance of conversions later on. Something that goes unnoticed in this uh, form of the game. It's great to watch. There's nothing sweeter than seeing a nice little drop goal sailing through the uprights. Tahiti using the space out to the right now. Oh, big hit. Absolutely crunched by Palmer Fowl, and he stayed on his feet. Advantage to the Aussies. Advantage is still being played as they get bring it down in the midfield, but... Gets it away to Jacopo. And he'll walk it over the, the line also. So the Aussies straight out to a 19-0 lead. Yeah, it's a tremendous hit. That was what started it. Absolutely poleaxed the uh, Tahitian runner. That's what you call turning defence into attack. 
Palmer foul. Absolutely lined up the Tahitian winger and smashed him as the conversion goes through. It's 21-0. Jacopo, the try scorer there. Plays for the Parramatta Club here in Sydney. Well, Jacob Taylor's had a very good look at the football. He's had three conversions and three restarts, uh, plus a few touches. There's a sense of deja vu going on as it's Taylor again to restart us. Tremendous, tremendous conditions here at North Sydney Oval. A nice little short restart, looking to bat it back. It was lost forward by the Aussies. So Tahiti look all bunched up. There's no, no width about their play. That's what the Aussies do so well. They just bunch these teams up. Yeah, fair reprieve for Tahiti. But yeah, Australia, look, they've looked the most clinical of all the teams that have performed on the park uh, this morning and this afternoon. I'm playing a, a structured brand of sevens, if there is such a thing. Yeah, they're definitely looking very structured. I think their coach, Michael O'Connor, would be just telling them to make sure they stick to their structures. That's what's going to win them this tournament that they so desperately need to win. Oh, not very good line out there from Tahiti. So the Aussies have run away with it. And Taylor busts through the gap and runs it under the uprights. Yeah, he's having a day out, Jacob Taylor. And uh, this shouldn't be a trouble at all. 26-0 Australia kick to come. It's all one-way traffic at the moment. Uh, I think Tahiti are looking forward to the second half so they can actually have a look at the other half of the football field. Tahiti can't get out of their own half at the moment. They haven't even touched the ball inside their own half yet. It's been all one-way traffic. The Aussies dominating this fixture at the Oceania Sevens. And you're right, Jacob Taylor's been seeing a lot of the footy. Taking the kickoffs, taking the conversions, scoring tries. The Aussies with brutal defence. Oh, great take there from Palmer Fowl. And straight away, they've got numbers out to the right. Good strength in the tackle from the Aussies. You've got numbers. That's what they do so well. Great ball out wide. Palmer Fowl will walk in for his second try as the halftime hooter sounds. It's been the Palmer Fowl and Jacob Taylor show from the Australian team. 33-0 at halftime, kick to come. It's funny the way Jacob Taylor's been kicking, you're probably almost back this one as well. It'll be his most challenging moment of the game. He's been using the breeze beautifully. There's just a, a light zephyr blowing south to north-south here at the uh, North Sydney Oval. And he's been using it beautifully. Can he slot this one? Strikes it well, but can't quite bring it back. So the score remains 33-0 at half time. Tahiti barely had a chance to touch the ball. Yeah, Michael O'Connor will be fairly, fairly happy with that. I think they did what was required of them, it was, you know. Nothing out of the ordinary. It wasn't razzle-dazzle, but they certainly took their chances. You, know, you can't be unhappy with 33-0 at half-time. No, that's right. He'd be happy with the way that they retained possession the whole time. They're looking very relaxed, very comfortable here in the huddle. Michael O'Connor would have run around a fair few times on North Sydney Oval too, you would have thought. Yeah, he certainly turned out here. Usually in the, uh, the colours of uh, Manly Moringa. That's right. It's nice to see him with the good guys. Rugby Sevens, he's been a long-time coach of this Australian side. Of course, they won the uh, Tokyo tournament earlier in the year. And they looked destined for good things this year. But uh, they, they need to win this tournament or make, at least make the final to make the Rugby World Cup next year in Moscow. 
Yeah, it should be very exciting. I think, I think anything less than the final will be uh, disappointing for Australia. But from what we've seen uh, so far, you know, they stick to their game plan. They should be there this afternoon. A lot more rugby left ahead, though. I don't want to jump ahead. Tahiti got a, an animated, uh, not a dressing down, but probably animated encouragement there from their coach. Bit of a rev up. They need it. They just need to get some ball. That's what the Aussies have starved them of the pill. They've barely had a chance to touch it. And then when they have, they've been put under immense pressure by this Australian defence. They need to uh, use the width of the field. That's the, the best way to get tries in rugby sevens. And Tahiti, every time they've touched it, have just looked a little bunched up. It's Oliver Marie to get us underway. It's a beautiful high kickoff. Drops for the Aussies. And then Miller cleaned it up. And they will go wide. And it's that man, Palmer Fowl. And speed on the outside from the Aussie 7 side. He's got Fowl back on the inside. No, that's Taylor. And Taylor will run away. And score yet another try for the Aussie side. They seem to be scoring off first phase every time they get the ball, the Aussies. Yeah, beautiful play by Australia. Sticking to the basics, went wide. They've got the speed. They're getting on the outside man. And Taylor doing his best job at, uh, at support play. There's another kick. Works two more points on. He's a point scoring machine. 40 nil to the Australian side here in the second half at the Oceania Rugby Sevens against Tahiti, who have really barely touched the ball. That's very much been a training session for the, uh, the men in lime green. For Taylor again, this is something Australia been working on, these short little restarts and the tap backs. Yeah, using their best volleyball skills. Here we go. Tahiti have the ball, finally. And there's a bit of space out wide for them. No. <laughs> it's a forward pass. Oh, goodness me. Nothing going right for the Tahitians. Yeah, first bit of space to move there by Tahiti. It looked like it was on for, for a minute, but no. Mike's here. And again, you think Australia will make the most of a set play opportunity. Right in the middle of the field, 22 metres out. Come closer. Taylor standing directly Touch. behind the Pause. Aussie scrum. Engage. Yeah. Bind up. Red. Hold. <laughs> Early. Free kick. Push back. Come back. Oh. Eight. Foul lingering out there on the wing. Taylor takes it up to the line. Brought down. About ten out. They throw it back on the inside to Palmer Fowl. Release Red. There's space for Taylor if they can get it. You need to release Red. Not releasing. So keep going, keep the Aussies... Going. I'll just slow it down here. It's in the hands of Tuapu. Setting their attacking line. Taps it. Taylor, little set play. Short ball. Oh, and it's amazingly soft. Too easy for Palmer Fowl. That's a hat trick for Palmer Fowl. And that was incredibly soft, you're right. Yes. Tahitian defence in sixes and sevens there. Yeah, it's funny, that was a, it was a little bit too, you know, too easy for Australia. Then it was, a, it was a training drill and it was one done at half speed at that. Um, they're fine tuning, doing what they have to do. Yeah. That's his first miss today, Jacob Taylor. So the score remains 45 to nil. But Tahiti just... They're really getting worked over in defence, aren't they? They can't get the ball. And when they do, they're getting smashed. And the Aussies are running rings around them at the moment. Yeah, very well drilled outfit. Again, Taylor gets us underway. All Australia on the right-hand side. Backwards. Knock back. And Palmer Fowl has been the star of the show today, along with Jacob Taylor. Shows and goes himself. Jacopo. Here's Palmer Fowl. He's everywhere. He is absolutely everywhere. Jacopo now Miller slicing through a gap. Flicks it back inside. This is Blaine. Still going, Blaine. 
over the 22. Shows on the inside. He'll go all the way himself, the big fellow, into the corner. That's a great bit of play from the Aussie 7 side, and particularly Blaine. Very agile for the big man. Showing it inside, showing it outside. Put the head down and backed himself. Yeah, there was certainly a... Uh, Certainly a mismatch on the outside, but Blaine shows and goes himself. Great try to the Aussie 7 side. They're racking up a cricket score here. Back him in on this one. Oh, it's a beautiful strike, but it just shaves the outside of the upright and doesn't come through the, the posts. So great stuff. Score remains at 50 nil, and the guy on the scoreboard probably building up more of a sweat than some of the Australians. Yeah, the Ken Irvine scoreboard over in the southern end of North Sydney Oval has got all the scores up there, and it's the, one of the old-style scoreboards, so the, the man operating that would be in a bit of trouble. He'd be breaking in a big sweat. Maria the Tahitian skipper. Now some red ball in hand for the team in red. Comes across. Oh, that was Wong Sung. Big hit. The Aussies doing well to disrupt the breakdown, but there's a number out. Well, there's numbers out wide here for Tahiti. Oh, just lost forward by the Aussies. They'll come back for the scrum. Tahiti almost had a, a mismatch on the outside there, but couldn't quite get it out there. The Aussies doing well to shut it down. It's been a tough day out there for the Tahitians, but they'll learn a lot from this experience. They thought the tournaments are, are very good for the emerging nations coming through. Yeah, it's great to see all these world-class sides matching up against each other. And relative minnows. Tahiti are struggling today, but they definitely will learn a lot. You're right, Dave Campbell. Like that. I'll kick for the line here. Not a, not a ploy you normally see in sevens, but Tahiti just need a bit of territory. A bit of breathing space. Has he found touch? Yes, he just finds touch. That's a great touch finder too from Tahiti. And so they've got the ball inside their own half, inside the Aussie half. Yeah, they've been down here for quite some time. A very deep back line getting set. They've got an opportunity to try and put something on the board. The Hooter sounds for full time, so this will be the last play. It's won by the Tahitians and batted back there. No one behind him, kicks it forward. And it's come off an Aussie. The Aussies clean it up, and here we go. Now they've got numbers out to the right. Big long ball out to foul. Can he get a fourth try? Shows. Oh, too easy from Palmer oh. Fowl. Great footwork. And he'll put it down right in the corner. That's his fourth try. It's 55-0 to Australia over Tahiti with kick to come. That will be full time as well. And they are through to the semifinals in convincing fashion. That's probably fitting that Palmer Fowl scores the final try. He was outstanding. He did everything very, very easily, as well as Jacob Taylor who has the ball in hand. Those two controlled the play. Matt Blaine scored a great try. Um, all in all, it's a good team effort from Australia. And look, they didn't extend themselves, but they did what they had to do. And Taylor can't make the extras count, so it is 55-0 to Australia over Tahiti. And we have our four semi-finalists in the Oceania Sevens now. Samoa, Tonga, the Cook Islands, and Australia. Through to the semis. Yeah, I think the semis will be uh, look very different from what we saw. Um, quite loose play today. Not huge amounts of running rugby. Um, I think early on there was, especially Tonga and the New Guinea game. But outside of that, it was, it was quite static, and hopefully that'll open up. Um, but I think Cook Islands have got a bit left in them. Australia never got out of first gear. Uh, Samoa did it comfortably. Tonga was probably the one that was extended. Uh, and that was a mixture of a, of a very... A lively and vibrant New Guinea team, but, and maybe a dash of complacency 